Hi, it's October the 8th, 2019. This is Dr. Fryer with the first of a two-part video lesson series on Gmail basics. In this series, we're going to talk about 10 different things that you need to know how to do in Gmail. And in part one, we're going to talk about these first five, descriptive subject lines, basic etiquette, choosing senders, and attachments. So let's go ahead and get started first by talking about a descriptive subject line. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, another window and I'm and I'm going to remind everybody the ways that you can get to Gmail you can always click on the Gmail icon right up here and uh, you can also click on the waffle when you're in a Google um, application of some kind, a website, and you should have a Gmail icon. You can also just go to mail.google.com to be able to get there. So uh, you can see that I've got a number of messages, in fact 69 unread messages and here is an example of a message that I have that has a good subject line. It says, our science project meeting on Monday. So when you send a message, you want to make sure that that subject line summarizes well what you're talking about. And so if I'm ready to send a message, I can click on compose. I can go ahead and put the person that I want to send the message to. Um, let's say I'm just going to send it to myself, I guess. And then here on the subject, this is where you're going to type what this is about. This isn't the body of your message, but this tells people what your message is going to be about. Um, and let's say this is going to be about uh, the weekend's uh, debate tournament. And so that is going to let people know what it's about. Why do you want to do this? Well, it's because um, you want people to read your message. And sometimes people will just read the subject line. They won't even read the entire thing, um, but there we go. Um, you want to go ahead and share um, a good subject line so that it lets people know what this is about. And then, uh, as we're going to talk about with etiquette, you want to put, put these other elements uh, into your email message. All right, so that's a little bit about a subject line. Let's talk about basic etiquette. Um, I want to go ahead and show you an example of an email that really doesn't follow this very well. I've blurred out the name, so we're not seeing who this is from. Uh, but this is actually an email that I recently received from one of my students, and we haven't taught this yet. And this is the exact reason why I'm teaching this. So the student sent me this email, and they only had a subject line. Um, and they did not put anything at all here in the body. Now you can see in my reply, I included uh, a salutation. Um, so you always want to include a salutation. Email is not text messaging. That's a really big lesson. And you want to be sure that you have that you make a good impression with email. And so by following some of these basic guidelines and rules, you can do that. So uh, have a salutation, hi, dear, and the person's name, the message that you have, and then conclude your message with your name. Okay. This example message right here um, is not following that kind of etiquette. So let me go ahead and go in here and show you, uh, you know, this, this example. I've actually gone ahead and typed this. Notice that I've said who it's to, so either to their name, dear, and then you can either have a comma or a colon. You're going to type um, your message that, that you're going to be sending them. If you need them to take action, you can include that as well. You know, please RSVP to let me know if you can come. All right. And one of the things too to notice, look how Google is, is auto uh, filling this. I can press the tab button when that happens and it will go ahead and fill that in. And so it's just guessing, you know, based on all of the different emails that have been read and the, the algorithms that, that are being written. And then I've got my name. We'll talk in a little bit about how we can have the signature file and put that in. But that's just a little bit to keep in mind when it comes to basic email etiquette. Uh, and things that you want to uh, keep in mind are your salutation that you're going to have, the body of your message with complete sentences, punctuation, capital letters, all that good stuff, and then having a closing when you go ahead and end your message. The last thing I want to mention here in this section is something called confidentiality. Notice that in this email message, if I click on show details, you can see, and this was a test that I sent, all of the people receiving this message, which in this case, oops, was just three different, you know, users, I can see all of their addresses. And so one of the problems that can happen, especially when you're sending to a group, is down here at the bottom, 
Anybody who received this message can click reply all and everybody receives that message. Now, sometimes that's a great thing and you want that to happen. But I do this a lot when I'm uh, sending messages to groups is I will, I will send the message to myself, but I'm going to use something called the blind carbon copy. So over here on the side, there are two things, carbon copy and blind carbon copy. When you want people to see all of the recipients, but, but a message isn't directly for them. Uh, it's it's for, to, to someone else, but you want them to get a copy. That's when you are going to... Um, put their name in here and they're going to see it. But when you don't want them to see uh, the names of everybody who's receiving the message, that's when you put it in your blind carbon copy. And so that is going to allow you to send a message to all these folks, but they're not all going to see it. All right. And so that's another important thing to keep in mind when it comes to email etiquette. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about choosing senders. And guess what? I just did that. That was I, I, I skipped my order. Uh, that was choosing senders. Uh, just to review, when I click compose, when you choose your senders, you're going to be able to you know type the the person you want to send it to here, and you always have to have somebody in the two line. But this is where you turn on the CC or the BCC fields. All right. So I actually kind of got ahead of myself, but that's fine. I want to get through this. So let's go ahead now and talk about attachments. So attachments are files that you're going to put on an email message. Um, you know, checking in on how you are doing. Um, remember, we're going to do our salutation and um, we're going to type in complete sentences. And now I want to attach something. Down here at the bottom of this message, you can see that I have a paper clip. I also have a Google Drive icon and an insert photo icon. And so let me show you how these work. When I click on attach files, it's going to let me browse on my computer. And for example, here on my desktop, I've got um, a file here about grades. It's a picture. But notice that it goes down here at the bottom. I've actually covered up or, or uh, obscured everybody's name here, so there's no confidential information in this. But see how it goes down here at the bottom? Look how this is different when I'm putting in an image if I click on this and choose Insert Photo. If I do the same file, I'm going to insert this file called Grades. Instead of going at the bottom, look at that. It's a picture that's right here. Um, so uh, that is is really handy to know. Something else good to know is that if you want to send a file, so I could say here is the presentation from today's lesson. Again, instead of clicking on the file, this time I'm going to click on Google Drive, insert files using Google Drive, and it's going to show me things on my Google Drive. And I can choose recent and see the things that I've recently been working on. And let's say this was the slideshow that I wanted to send. So when I click insert, it is going to put it in line right here so that I can, um, you know, not have it at the bottom. And in fact, I can click this X here to delete that attachment at the bottom. But people are going to be able to click on it and then I can continue my message. So this is an inline image and this is an inline Google document. The last thing I'll do, I'll just say, have a great day. And I'm going to put a different kind of image, but this time I'm going to put an animated GIF. So I'm going to browse my computer and I'm going to I think go into this old folder and if I put the, the word GIF, um, yes, this is it. Here is an animated GIF from the movie um, Inside Out and isn't that cool? It you know animates right here inside and there are some good websites that are educational. As far as finding these, we need to be careful. We're searching on the web. There are some inappropriate things, of course, that are animated GIFs and I'm not going to go out and tell you right now to you know go out and search for those, um, but we are going to have a list in our class of some uh, excellent, kind of like we use Unsplash as a place to get photos. There are some educationally curated places to get animated GIFs. So that is a little bit about email attachments. The last thing which I'd like to talk about is getting organized with labels, all right? And this is pretty important um, because we're going to get a lot of mail and there's going to be some mail that we want to keep and there's going to be stuff that we want to, want to delete. And so how do, how do we get organized? So um, 
let me uh, do a, a search here maybe just to first uh, talk about deleting things. So there are some different assignments that have been put in here in this particular account. And so I'm going to search for the word new assignment. And look at this. I've received all of these different notifications for assignments. If I want to not keep these but just trash them, in, in Gmail, this is actually putting the label on them called trash. And so I could select them one by one like this, or I could just click this box here at the top and I can select them all at once. And so one of the most basic labels that I can put on, if I click delete, is the trash label. And so when something is put in the trash, um, it doesn't show up here in, in the inbox anymore. And so if I want to see it, um, I can go to more and I can click on my trash. So here are those messages that I just moved into the trash. And now I'm down to 55 messages here in my inbox. Um, I could also do the same thing for security alert. So I've got uh, a different a security alert. And so look at how many different security alerts that I have from Google. Really quickly, if I want to process through all 38 of those messages, I can select them here and then I can click the trash can and those are all gone. What's actually happened is I have a label that I have put on for the trash and so when you you know click on one of these uh, messages you're gonna see it here right it's the label trash but that makes it not appear here in my inbox but what I'd like to talk about now and this is the last topic for this video are labels and you can see over here I've already created a label called media ideas and then inside that folder or label, there's a label for Adobe. And so these are the different messages that have come in from Adobe. Um, and so I could have deleted these, but we're saying that these are things that I, I want to keep. Um, and so let's say that um, I want to, um, maybe I want to keep um, uh, messages about Powtoon, like right? because I've signed up for Powtoon, and here's a couple different messages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this message and you can see right now it has a label of inbox and that's why it's showing up here as one of my 18 um, unread messages in my inbox. This is the label button and so I'm going to click on labels and then I'm going to uh, make one for Powtoon. Alright and so I'm going to create it. Now if I wanted to just create that label there I could but I'm actually going to choose to nest that label under a parent and so I'm gonna say these are media ideas and so now when I create that label look what happened over here on the side I've, I'm starting to get organized here and so I have media ideas from Adobe and then from Powtoon and so now I will remove the inbox label and when I click back here on my inbox, that is gone. So I'm going to do the same thing here for all of my Powtoon messages. Here are four different messages from Powtoon, and I'll select those. And then all at once, I'm going to click on the label and choose to put it into my uh, Powtoon Media Ideas folder. So I'll select it here and click Apply. And now those are all inside that folder. If I would like to remove these from my inbox, it, I could delete them. And if you don't want the message, it's fine. Just go ahead and delete it. But if it's something you want to hang on to, and you can do that with Gmail, and there's no limit to how many messages you can uh, basically have um, when you're on an educational account like we are, this is the button that you're going to click, and it's the archive button. When you click archive, it removes the inbox label. And so now when I go to my inbox, ah, oh, look at that. I only have 15 messages. So really pretty quickly, I've been able to filter out a lot of messages. I've saved some over here with labels, and I've also thrown some things away in the trash. So that takes us through our first uh, five topics. I would encourage you to next join me for part two of Gmail Basics, where we'll continue to explore some important skills and concepts that everybody needs to know about Gmail.